Some islands in Tuvalu have actually disappeared or gone underwater. We are completely at the mercy of climate change and sea level rising. Because Tuvalu is a coral atoll nation, the water not only comes from the sides, but it comes from underneath as well. Every month, it's flooded. The runway is underwater on a high tide. The international runway, there is no way out. That just spells disaster, complete disaster for us. At the moment, by 2100, 95% of the island will be underwater by daily high tides. I think it's becoming more and more of a reality that we might not be able to live here in Tuvalu. Tuvalu is an archipelago of eight low-lying atoll nations, barely two meters above sea level, situated in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. It's the least visited country on Earth. There's no tourism here. It's just a strip of land, uh, the, the rim of the old volcanic core, and that's what we're living on. Tuvaluan culture is... I might be biased, obviously, but it's the best. <laughs> we're quite laid back. If you come by the roadside, people are just relaxing, doing their own stuff. It is quite an open, free, peaceful, loving people and society. Very friendly. They care for anyone. You know, that's our way of life. It's a special privilege to grow up here and uh, to have this sense of community. In Tuvalu, we are really at the front line of climate change. Water security is, a, is an issue for us. We don't have rivers or mountains, and therefore uh, our source of water is rain water catchment. And if we go without rain for, say, two weeks, in Tuvalu, that is uh, already a drought. Some of the houses, they only have like water tank, and the household itself is like more than 20 people, and they are just using one water tank there. We don't enough to cater for the, for the whole family. And then frequently now, we've been having tropical uh, cyclones, which brings with it a strong storm surge. We're right at the edge of the sea here. The highest point on Funafuti is only a couple of metres above sea level, which means when the sea level does rise or we have large storms, they're very prone to inundation, which doesn't only affect the communities and the infrastructure, but it affects the food security, the water security. Everything is inundated by the sea. In the garden areas where they used to plant, the crops are not growing as much anymore. Here, this is a local uh, pit where Men normally come and uh, plant their uh, local stable food like uh, pulaka and taro. When it's high tide, we have this um, uh, water level increases. Sea water just infiltrates our taro patch, just destroying our uh, plantation oftentimes. They are dying because of um, less nutrients that they are receiving, and especially with the salinity that has been uh, uh, added on to this, uh, this field. We still try to maintain our culture, our traditional food, so we just cannot just leave them and, and let it die away. It's something that's in the back of our heads, um, thinking about the future of not being able to grow up here. I don't think it's something our ancestors ever thought possible. It's quite scary. We want to stay here. No one wants to leave their home, so why should we be forced to? None of our people would like to leave Tuvalu. None of our people would like Tuvalu to disappear because of uh, the effect of climate change and sea level rise. All of our people would like to maintain our sovereignty, our identity and cultural heritage, and we would like to remain in Tuvalu. Since the changing of uh, the environment and the climate is going on, we have to adapt as well. 
we have adopted a national development strategy in terms of how we see Tuvalu develop over the next uh, 10 years. Here in Tuvalu, we have a food security project which we are trying to integrate our local crops to become more salt tolerant. So we're importing some of uh, salt tolerant crops from our Pacific brothers and sisters. We're also trying to build up the sustainable gardens which, which are off ground so we can give to the outer islands and they have their own gardens. Then we have a uh, Tuvalu Coastal Adaptation Pilot Project to build more land and build upward. We are basically using the, the island's natural defence, which is this storm bird, um, and raising that to uh, protect the infrastructure and the communities. So it's building more land into the lagoon and raising it high. So it's two metres above the current uh, surface, land surface. Reclamation in Fernafuti, it's, it's the first of its kind in the Pacific. Um, I mean, reclamation is not a new technology but it's the first time it's been used to actually save a nation. The reclamation project here in Tuvalu, it's amazing. It's something that's actionable. We can see it being done now. It's about seven and a half hectares of extra land for Funafuti that will be flood free for the next 100 years. This phase is only including three of the islands. Towards the next phases, we want to include all the other islands. This is a long-term solution, and it's real. We've changed the nature of this island, you know, we've increased it by five, ten percent and it's the, the only flood-free land when, when another storm comes, there's, there's somewhere safe to go, and it, it provides a future and, and, and hope. This is a demonstration to showcase uh, to the global community that this is the only permanent solution to protecting our land and saving Tuvalu from the impact of sea level rise. These kinds of projects are helping us uh, overcome thoughts of disappearing and having generations not know about their culture in Tuvalu. There's a connection between what is going on in the world and what is being felt here locally. Tuvalu and other uh, low-lying atoll nations in the Pacific do not contribute to the causes of global warming, and yet we are the ones that are facing the brunt of the effect of uh, climate change. We want to live peacefully and be safe, safe from the adverse impacts of climate change, because we are experiencing a tremendous impact on our land, our resources, our health, our way of life and also our culture. As a grandfather, it uh, makes me feel the sense of responsibility to ensure that we leave a better world to our grandkids and their generation. For us, there's no five years, 10 years, 50 years. The time to act is now. We all just work together so we can build a better future, not only for Tuvalu, but for the whole world. Though we are small, we have a big heart. And though we are projected to be sinking, we are fighting.